In Lewis Carroll's Alice in Wonderland, before starting to read a letter, the white rabbit asked the king, Where shall I begin, please your majesty? Begin at the beginning, the king said gravely, and go on till you come to the end, then stop. That's basically what I'd like to do with my Blender tutorials. My goal is to redo all of them in Blender 2.62. I think we can all agree that the logical starting point is the initial default scene, so that's where I'll start. We'll first tour the initial splash screen. It's pretty easy, and all too tempting, to press any key and ignore this screen. However, there's a lot of information there, definitely worth taking a few minutes to discover all the resources and support that's available in Blender. After our exploration of the splash screen, We'll do a quick tour of Blender's default scene, which will give us a peek into all the capabilities Blender offers. With Blender, the problem is not where the beginning is. It's more like, how do you go on until you come to the end? After thinking about this for a while, and also after reading your comments, I've come to the conclusion that there's really no end to what Blender offers. Blender's trying to imitate reality, after all, something that really doesn't have any end to it. I do have a goal, however. This is to complete the rewrite of all the Blender tutorials by this October, in time for the Blender conference in Amsterdam, a conference I plan to attend. Hopefully I can meet all of you there. For me, this would be an exciting opportunity to meet and talk with all the talented people who made Blender the worldwide success that it is. That doesn't mean that I'll just mechanically convert each Blender tutorial in sequence. I plan to mix it up a bit, adding tutorials on new Blender features I discover, some that might appeal to the more advanced user, as I go. Also, I'll be doing GIMP tutorials because, as I mentioned in the introductory video, GIMP and Blender make a great team. This way, I hope to make the content appealing not only to the beginner, but also to those of us with more Blender experience. Forgive me, but I'll also rant a bit, giving you my take on Blender, computer graphics, and life in general. Feel free to comment and to rant back. So without further ado, let's get started. Here's the initial splash screen for Blender 2.62. Instead of the usual impulse to dive right in, let's take a look at it. The splash screen has the following links. Donations. Blender is free, open source software relying on donations. I encourage you to contribute to the efforts of the Blender Foundation to continue their work. Credits. It's nice to be recognized. This is where the contributors to Blender worldwide can take a bow. Release Log. A way to keep track of the latest developments. Blender is constantly being upgraded. New features are added, bugs are fixed, movies are made. This is the place to follow all these things. Manual. The latest documentation on Blender's features. Blender website. Find out all the latest goings on at Blender Central. User Community. There's plenty of information in the language of your choice. Tutorials, videos, sample applications, models, and so on. Python API reference. If you're into programming, you can extend Blender by writing Python scripts. This reference tells you how to do it. Interaction. The default is the Blender interface. However, if you're more comfortable with Maya, you can use the Maya interaction. Recent. You can revert to a previous Blender session. Now it's time to look at the default scene. Press any key to dismiss the splash screen. The default scene contains three objects, a cube, a camera, and a lamp, called appropriately cube, camera, and lamp. Initially the cube is selected. You can see that the cube is selected because of the orange highlight around it. The big window taking up most of the screen is the 3D viewport. This is where you'll be doing most of your work. First. Let's see what we can find out about the cube. At the top is a thin, wide, one-line window with an information icon, the letter I, called the Info Window or Information Window. The window shows all information, not only about the cube, but also about the scene in general. If you point the mouse at the far right of the window, you'll see the word cube, which tells us that the cube is the current selected object. There's another way to tell that the cube is selected and in fact to find out about what all objects in the scene are. In the upper left corner of the screen is a small window called the outline window. This window is a visual outline of all the objects in the scene. 
We'll ignore the render layers and window entries for now and use the scroll bar to scroll down the entries in the outline. Notice the entries for camera, cube, and lamp. The cube is highlighted, which tells us that it's the selected object. You can select another object by clicking on its entry in the outline window. Let's select the lamp in this way. Now the lamp, the circular object, is selected. Select the camera. The camera is selected. Note that the camera is pointed above and to the left of the cube. Select the cube again. You can do another, a number of other things with the outline window. For example, you can show and hide object by clicking the little eye icon. Let's hide the lamp. Click the eye on the lamp's entry. Look at the 3D viewport. The lamp disappears. In the outline window, the eye is grayed out. Click the eye again. Now the lamp is visible again. Make the cube have the selection. We can find out even more information about the cube and the scene in general. Below the outline window is the properties window, which has at the top a button bar with a camera icon initially selected. The properties change depending on which icon is selected. If you hover the mouse pointer over the icon, you'll see what type of properties are displayed. We have render, scene, world, object, and so on. Click on the object icon, represented by the cube. Note that it tells us that the cube is selected, and there's also information about its location in X, Y, and Z coordinates. Its rotation, its scale, how big it's been expanded or contracted, and many other things that we'll see in later videos. In the outliner, click on the camera entry. In the 3D viewport, as we saw before, the camera now is selected. In the object properties panel, the camera is indicated as selected, and its location, rotation, and scale are shown. Click the cube entry to make it selected again. By moving the cursor until you see a double arrow and dragging the border, you can expand or contract a window. You can do this either horizontally or vertically. Let's expand the properties window for the cube by left clicking the mouse and dragging the window's left border further to the left. You can change the cube's property by changing its values in the window. For example, we can change its X location or its Y rotation. I'll resize the window back to its original size by reversing what we did to expand it i.e. left clicking the left border with the mouse and dragging the border to the right. At the bottom is the timeline editor which is used in animating the objects in a scene. An animation is simply a lot of images, each one called a frame, that display in sequence. If you display the frames quickly enough the brain interprets it as smooth movement. By moving the green vertical bar to the left or to the right you can view each frame in the animation. The 3D viewport tells us what object and what frame is selected. VCR-like controls control the animation playback as well. We'll revisit animation in more detail in future videos. The 3D viewport actually consists of a display area and, to the left, a toolbar area. The buttons on the toolbar change depending on the object selected. Another way to select an object is to navigate to it and then right-click. Let's navigate to the camera and right click on it. Now the camera is selected and the toolbar contains different buttons. If you want to hide the toolbar and have more room for display, press the letter T. Pressing T again shows the toolbar. This is a nice convenience feature. It's possible to change the type of the editor window. Click on the editor type button located at the left end of every editor header uh, menu. For instance, here I'll change the 3D editor view to the file browser editor window. Now I'll change it to user preferences. Now I'll change it back to 3D viewport. The default blender window can be changed. I suggest you make only minor changes until you become more familiar with the location of the editor panels, context buttons, and controls available in Blender. That ends our tour of Blender 2.62's default scene. We'll go into much more detail on each of these windows in future videos. I hope this gives you an idea of why I think Blender is endless. There's just so much out there. Happy Blendering!